हेलो आई एम श्री कृष्ण कोल्हार फ्रॉम विद्या प्रतिष्ठान कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग बारामती आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर यू विल लर्न डिस्क्रीट फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इन मैटलैब बिफोर एक्चुअली राइटिंग मैटलैब प्रोग्राम यू सी सम ऑफ द बेसिक्स रिगार्डिंग डी एफ टी डिस्क्रीट फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म इज बेसिकली अ कंप्यूटेशन टूल यूज टू इवेल्युएट फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑन अ डिजिटल कंप्यूटर अनलाइक डिस्क्रीट टाइम फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म which is defined for sequences of finite as well as infinite length the dft is defined for sequences of finite length only as we know discrete time fourier transform is continuous and periodic the dft is obtained by sampling one period of fourier transform at a finite number of frequency points if we use a digital computer to evaluate n frequency points over the interval 0 to 2 pi the n frequency points would be located at omega equal to 2 pi by capital n into k where k is 0 to n minus 1 and it represents kth frequency point this equally spaced frequency points of discrete time fourier transform represent the dft and it is denoted by x of k so the formula of dft can be obtained simply by replacing omega equal to 2 pi by capital n into k into the formula of discrete time fourier transform so the formula of dft x of k is equal to summation over n from 0 to capital n minus 1 x of n multiplied by e raised to minus j 2 pi k n by capital n where k varies from 0 to capital n minus 1 in the same way we can obtain the inverse dft formula also we can write dft and idft formula in terms of twiddle factor the formula of twiddle factor is wn is equal to e raised to minus j 2 pi by capital n so if we will replace this exponential by wn into the formula of dft we will get dft and idft formula in terms of twiddle factor now we'll see the algorithm for writing matlab program for obtaining dft of a sequence so first of all we will accept the sequence x of n and capital n that is number of point dft from user then we'll check if n capital n is greater than the length of sequence or not if capital n is less than l then time domain aliasing will occur so capital n should always be greater than or equal to capital l if capital n is greater than l then the padding of sequence should be done with n minus l zeros after the sequence is padded it is multiplied with the twiddle factor matrix to obtain the dft so this is the algorithm by which we can implement matlab program for obtaining dft of a sequence now we'll go for matlab program all of you can see the desktop of matlab software there are four main windows out of that the first one is command window where you can directly write commands and you can execute them also you can specify inputs to your program as well as you can see outputs of your programs on this command window also you can see values of variables used in program onto this command window then there is second middle window called command history where the history of commands that are written onto the command window will be stored then there is another important window called as workspace where the all the variables used in the program will be stored and the last window it is called current folder where the path of currently executing program will be stored now we will write our program in matlab editor and for that i will write command edit and the name of file that is let's say my dft with an extension of .m because matlab files have extension .m and i will enter and this is my matlab editor where i will write program so first of all i will write some of the basic commands like clc stands for clear command window then clear clear all clear all will clear the workspace then i will write close all which will close all the previous open figure windows then i have to accept sequence xn and capital n from user so for that i will write xn it is equal to i will use command input in brackets i will write 
enter the sequence which will get displayed on command window and after that user will be able to enter the sequence the same way for capital N also I will use same command that is input yes here it is remaining input and then again in parenthesis I will write enter the value of capital N and semicolon then I will pass these two inputs to a function which will actually implement the formula of DFT so and will give me the values of DFT so XK is the variable in which we will store the value of DFT it is equal to DFT underscore fun this is nothing but the function which we will be writing and the inputs will be XN and capital N now I will have to write the function that is DFT underscore fun so for that again I will go to the MATLAB command window I will write here edit DFT underscore fun one thing to be noted about MATLAB is that the name of function and the name of file in which you are writing the function should be same so again I will enter and the function file should always start with the keyword function so function and then the mat, uh, function declaration so function we should write xk equal to dft underscore dft underscore fun in brackets xn comma capital n and the first thing that we are required to do is to find the length of sequence so capital l is equal to i will use command called length of xn which will give me length of that sequence and then we will compare that length of sequence with capital n and if it is less than l then what should happen the error message should be displayed why because time domain aliasing will occur and we will display that error message that n should always be greater than or equal to l and then we will write n now after doing this we will pair that sequence x of n with 0 so we will write xn in square brackets xn space for that for padding sequence with zeros I will use command zeros which will create a matrix containing all elements 0 1 comma n minus capital L we should pad the sequence with n minus l zeros now after sequence is padded with zeros we should create a dual factor matrix for that we will write for k equal to 0 is to n minus 1 and for small n equal to 0 is to capital N minus 1 we should find out value of that exponential for each and every value of small k and n so for finding out value of exponential we will use command exp in bracket we will write the formula that is minus j multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by k multiplied by small n divided by we should write capital N so this is nothing but the exponential and we will store the value of exponential for each and every value of k and n into a matrix called twiddle factor matrix which is x1 I will write k plus x1 of k plus 1 comma n plus 1 I have written this simply because in, in MATLAB indices start from 1 not from 0 so it is equal to w n so this will give me the twiddle factor matrix now after obtaining twiddle factor matrix for getting dft we should multiply twiddle factor matrix that is x1 with the sequence that is xn 
so we will save this function and now we will go to our main program where we will plot this dft so for plotting dft we should define value of k and k varies from 0 is to n minus 1 and then for plotting dft or we will plot this dft in terms of magnitude as well as phase so we will be plotting we will be getting two plots magnitude plot and phase plot so first of all i should write the command subplot for plotting these two figures in a single window so 2 comma 1 comma 1 and then i will use command called stain because dft is discrete plot so stain x axis variable is k comma absolute of xk because i want to plot the magnitude and then i will write x label in bracket single inverted commas k and y label in bracket single inverted commas it will be x magnitude of xk and then i will write title to this plot it is nothing but the magnitude plot and simply i will copy paste this section and then i will edit into that so two subplot 2 comma 1 comma 2 instead of absolute value now i will write angle of xk angle command will give me the phase of xk in radians so here also i should write angle in bracket xk and instead of magnitude plot i should write here phase plot and then i will save it and then i will execute this one so now enter the sequence so i will enter the sequence as 1 comma 1 comma 1 and then i will enter the value of capital n as 4 and i will get the magnitude plot as well as the phase plot so this is how we can write a matlab program for finding out dft of a sequence now if again i will execute the same program and i will take the same sequence and if i will vary the number of point dft let's say 8 now what we can see is that the resolution of the dft is getting improved so if we will increase the number of point dft the resolution of the dft will be improved so to summarize in this video lecture we seen the formula for dft then we we seen how to write matlab program for implementing dft also we have seen some of the basic commands in matlab and also uh, we can conclude that if we will increase number of point dft we will get better resolution in the graph of dft thank you thank you for watching this video